we're very grateful for John, uh, I think second uh, trip to, to Hearts and this time we're going to go into a little bit more depth about some of the things he's been uh, doing and we were just debating before you guys arrived about how to introduce him and he said composer so that's uh, how I'll introduce him, so John Mathias composer but I know that there is some physics and there's some sound and there's some academia in the background there so so John can you just maybe paint the, the picture of how you've got to where you are now and and then that might be a nice lead into some of the things you're going to talk about and show us. I guess it's quite a complex picture, really. So I, <clears throat> I've always played music mm -hmm. and um, my academic background was in physics. So I did a PhD in theoretical physics at Exeter University <clears throat> in the 1990s. And um, that was in, in a subject called many body theory. So many body theory really is, is about how the interactions between things affect the overall system so what 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 mm -hmm. interacting things how interacting things are different from things that don't interact and they can be atoms they can be bosons they can be cars mm -hmm. they can be people so the whole of many body theory is about that and that was what my phd was in and um and so i've always had an interest in what you might call systems and complex systems and interaction but alongside that i've played played and composed music of all kinds i've been in bands i've released songwriting records and and I've, I've had a sort of composition life but I've also had I b between 2004 and, and last year I was associate professor at Plymouth University in sonic arts so I, I developed an interest in 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 looking at this sort of system approach to music in loads and loads of different contexts in a kind of sound installation context but also in a kind of a, a software context as well Right, and well, how have you found the, so for you, you've always had that mix of arts and, and science, which some people feel are very, is very different, but increasingly I think there's a feeling that actually art and science need to work together in order to be, to, they, they're, they're partners and, and you know, the STEM is now STEAM. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I think that one, one enhances the beauty of the other both ways. I mean, it doesn't have to be like that, of course. One doesn't have to have a scientific, you know, an interest in science to appreciate art and vice versa. But for me, the, 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 the sort of microscopic interest and the interest of the overall behavior enhances the beauty of what it is that I'm looking at usually. So that's, that's how I tend to see things. So you, you mentioned about the interbody theories and the interaction of things. So one of the things I know you're going to talk to us about and maybe be good to start with is about neurons, which obviously are always interacting in order for them to function. So how, did, how did that come about that you started to look into neurons? It came about because um, I was interested in, in, in rhythm. And so, so many complex, one of, the, one of the, the facets of complex systems is that one way of looking at them and trying to understand what they're doing, you look for some kind of characteristic events. So um, in traffic, it tends to be a traffic jam, for example, <laughs> One looks at the number of traffic jams and, and, and that tells you something about the traffic. With, when you look at um, stock markets, you tend to look at trading events. With, with, with um, neurons, the firing event or the, 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 the event at which the neuron releases its yeah. voltage to all of the, all of the sort of down, down the axons is, is a sort of characteristic event that seems to be an important event. And so in music, <clears throat> because music is a time-based um, art, one, one talks a lot about sound events. So the sound event is a thing that's talked a lot about in music and, and, and this, this event of sound can be all sorts of different things. It can be a note, it can be something that's recorded, it can come from a microphone. But I was interested in how, how this, the rhythm of the neuron, because, the, because what's going on in the neuronal system is so complex, how, yeah. how that, how that could, could possibly translate into sound events and produce something novel and new that we've never have heard before. So that was my, that was my initial point, if you like. And um, Nick's going to put up a, a lovely picture that I gave him earlier <laughs> <laughs> um, to, to, to illustrate what it is that I'm talking about. One, the one before that. <clears throat> Sorry, Nick. <clears throat> the, that's it. So, <clears throat> so what we're looking at here is something called a raster plot. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you imagine that as a graph, on the y-axis of a graph, you've got neuron number. So on, along the bottom, there's a horizontal line of dots, yeah? Mm -hmm. So that's, every time there's a dot, 
neuron number one is firing and it's time along the x-axis okay so that 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 corresponds to about roughly sort of three seconds in the life of this neural network okay mm -hmm. so it does look like braille <clears throat> i agree um so there are there are i think there are probably 20 neurons in this group right so that at the top you can see neuron number 20 is bom 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 and that's the rhythm oh, that it's firing. Right. Okay. okay so so these neurons they are they aren't individual they're connected to each other and what you find is in these raster plots this is one example but you find that you tend to get groupings of firings around certain points because of synaptic plasticity now I'll, I'll briefly explain what that is. It's basically the, 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 the change in the connection of the neurons because of the firing. Okay. Right. Essentially all these are triggering each other to fire and their connections are changing as they fire. Mm -hmm. Okay. So <clears throat> now if you look, I became interested in, you know, I talked about firing events. So each of these dots is a firing event, right? Yep. And I wanted to c convert them to sound event. And I was, I was kind of, interested in, in the correspondence between this, this kind of picture and the picture that Nick's going to show now. Thank you. Which is, um, it's the role of a player piano. So yeah. a player piano, you can see the role of the player piano. Yeah. So a player piano is an instrument where you, it, it mechanically moves this roller around. And then each time you see one of those holes in the card, it makes the piano make a noise, right. it makes a sound event. Okay, so this, I wanted to see whether one could do the same thing with this neuron raster plot that one could do with a player piano. So what we did was we, we, we looked at, I looked at various different mathematical models of these neuronal networks. And um, I worked with quite a simple model. Um, and every time there was a dot in that raster plot, every time there was a firing event in one of the neurons, what I was interested in happening was triggering a sound event. And I started off by triggering sounds from John Coltrane records, just because that's what I had hanging around. But they became, but I, but, but I was interested, I, was, I didn't want to create synthesized sounds. I wanted to create sounds that were in the environment. So right. each, of these, each time there was a, a dot on the plot, it took, it took a tiny little bit of sound called a grain. And the grain is a, a tiny little direct bit of set packet of sound and fired it and played it. Right. So I developed an instrument with a, with a group um, of people that are collaborators that um, we, we ended up calling the neuro granular sampler. OK, right. which is a bit of a mouthful. But a sampler is just something that takes something sound that already exists and plays it out. Yeah. And the yeah. neuro okay. from neuron and granular means from grains. So grains of yeah. sound triggered by neurons and then sampled and then played out. And then um, so this is a this is a video that Nick's going to play of um, me playing the violin into a neurogranular sampler and you can hear me playing the violin at the beginning and then you can hear the neurogranular sampler taking bits of the sound from the violin and re-triggering them. very much. Mm. Thank you, Nick. So 
that's the conversion of these neuronal dots into, into sound, um, grains of sound. And I just want to briefly show another project that we did. This is a collaboration with a friend, a uh, composer called Nick Ryan. And in this case, we took each dot and we converted it um, to a flashing light. So every time there was a firing of a neuron, it, an LED light was firing on an orchestral player's desk. And then we devised various instructions about what to do when the light flashed. And this is an excerpt from a piece called Cortical Songs, which um, you can just about see me playing the solo violin on the left, on the left in this video. Mm -hmm. You can hear me play. Um, that we wrote in uh, 2008. That was released in 2008, 2009. Um, so if we could play an excerpt of this, it'd be great. Thanks. And you can see the look for the flashing lights. Thank you. So John, what's so each grain or each neuron firing is a grain of sound or a light to then be converted into a sound. Yes. What, what, in, the, in the sampler, there, was, there seemed to be quite distinct patterns emerging within the, the globe of yes. cylinders and rings. What, what, what's driving each of the dots to appear? So in the, in, the, in, the, in the globe of the neurogranular sample, every time it's, it's a, a rotating raster plot. So the, the dots that I right. showed you is a raster yeah. plot. So every time there's a firing event, it creates a dot in that globe and you can see the patterns of the firing within that globe, if you like. So in that, in that classical piece, um, what we would do, we would intervene in the process. So every time what we would do is we'd, we'd choose a particular kind of series of notes. So those, da, 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 those series of notes form the basis of the whole piece. Yeah. And then the, the musicians would have those row of notes written out. And when the light flashed, they'd simply change note. So yeah. we we dictate the harmony, but the but the the rhythm was dictated by the by the flashing of the, the light, if you like. So it's a sort of it's 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 a sort of aid to aid to indeterminism, if you like. It's a way of bringing in indeterminism into the music. But we know, we globally know what it's going to be like and know what it's going to sound like. Because it's based on the raster plot that you had. Yeah. And, we, and the rules that we impose compositionally are fixed, like you only, only stick to these notes. Yeah. You know, so that it can't just sound like anything. But, but where does the raster plot come from? What generates each of those? Is that from... The raster plot is used in, in, in neuroscience. Um, if, you put, if you use an EEG, Right. Um, you you can you can get you can you can get raster plot information, or if you get a, a my, my my clinical neuroscience is very poor. But if you put if you, there is a way of putting um, a kind of a wire in a brain and getting getting yeah firing information, 
if you do that over a, over a, a series of neurons, you get a raster plot. Right. And, and mathematical models of, of, of groups of neurons produce these raster plots. And, and essentially, at the early part of this century, lots and lots of <clears throat> net, neuro, neuronal network people were very interested in how, how networks of neurons behave. It wasn't as understood as it is now. So synaptic plasticity had only just been discovered in the 90s. Um, and the and the role between that and how the neuron the neuronal interplay was was still very fascinating. It's still not terribly yeah. well understood, but it's understood better now. So the rest of the plot is like a way of looking at it to go, look, we're in this mode of firing now. Yeah. They're called alpha, beta, gamma, and 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 you can look at the the ways and that the rest of the plot was like a kind of way of gauging that from a network point of view. Right. And uh, Darren he was just asking, how, what influences your decision about which notes to used to be triggered well, that's, an, that's an emotional decision <laughs> <laughs> and a decision based on what you know want what what emotionally we want that music to sound like so da, 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 oh, yeah. that was the kind of sound and 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 in the fourth movement for example we didn't have any flashing lights but what we did we used we used the flashing lights in order to dictate the rhythm that we wrote so if you listen to, you can listen to it on Spotify, it's called Cortical Songs. The fourth movement starts with um, a, a pattern that goes doo -doo, da -doo, doo -doo. and that rhythm came from these firing patterns. Da -da, da -da, da. And we kept that rhythm and used it as the backing. And then I improvised the violin over the top. So it's, a, it's, it's essentially a kind of um, intervention with a neural network. It's like using the neural network as a collaborator Rather than saying you, you know, network does everything, the neural network collaborates with you. You get what you can out of it, but you still impose your own agency yeah. on the network. That's that was the that was our kind of approach, if you like. But it's it, it, it is a collaboration. It's not you just composing something. Mind yeah. you, if you mind you, if you just compose something without a raster plot, you're really directly linking to your own raster plot, aren't you? Of what's oh, happening. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> But then you know it's difficult because that if it's somebody else's raster plot, then you don't know quite what it's going to do. I guess that's why people collaborate with other other raster plotters rather than oneself. <laughs> Bands of raster plots. Um, so one one interesting thing happened when we were so Nick and I started writing a piece called Cortical Songs Two, and we had the um, we 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 had the the sort of um, for, we were fortunate to be invited to California on a week's residency. So we went to the University of Santa Cruz. And as part of that trip, we interviewed two surgeons from the San Francisco hospital. And um, they were, they were do, they did deep brain stimulation, which was, is a way of treating seriously ill Parkinson's patient. And essentially a wire goes in to the basal ganglia, right. the dopaminergic region, the basal ganglia, and they stimulate it. They don't really know why it works where they put a current in there to see what happens. And um, sometimes it works very well, um, even though they don't really know why. Um, and one of the surgeons thought that the chordate, which is one of the nuclei in the basal ganglia, yeah. <clears throat> was linked with tinnitus. And he asked his patients, do you mind if we just stimulate the chordate on the way? <laughs> <laughs> and several of these patients said, we don't mind. <laughs> because okay, we've got Parkinson's and where we're going to, you know, but they were conscious in this operation. Yeah, yeah. And um, and so what they did was they they went they got to the core date and they turned on the current, and and they asked these patients what their tinnitus sounded like whilst they changed the current, and they could basically play a song on their tinnitus. They changed the frequency. They changed the perception. Yeah. And, and so there's this interesting, what, what, what came out of those, the papers that they wrote and the discussion really is that tinnitus is, although it's, it's a, a disease, you know, it's an, it's an ear, inner ear problem, it can be modulated by playing with the deep brain. And so there's quite an interesting idea of consciousness and our, and our, and our um, you know, we're, our, our, our conscious mind's idea of what we experience and 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 the inner brain if you like rather yeah. than just our, our senses and perceptions got a couple of quick couple of questions so roland was quite interested can other natural systems be used to trigger the the, the complexity that can drive the music and and the reverse almost kerry was interested in um can that help explain why some bits of music are universally registered with people because it's 
trigger you know it's mapping to something that's already there well they're both really good questions the first one absolutely and if you look in the in the in the sort of discipline of what you might call sound art um pretty much every social or, or, or kind of complex system has been translated into sound in some way because of the interest in interaction and rhythm that yeah, I right. talked about. to a greater or lesser extent but the really good ones are the ones in which you know the conceptual framework and the musical framework all knit together and produce something that's more more than the sum of its parts um, the second question yes absolutely I, I think that there are universals in in, in music and what it does to us. Mm -hmm. I, had a, I had a funny meeting yesterday with one of my colleagues who said that every time he hears the song Mandy by Barry Manilow and the key change into the middle eight, he starts crying and he doesn't know why. <laughs> <laughs> and, he, and, and so he doesn't want to cry. He doesn't like Barry Manilow, but, he, but there's obviously something about this key yeah. change with him, I mean, I don't actually, I had to admit I never heard Mandy by Barry Manilow, which probably, I don't know whether that puts me in a minority or not, but, but you know, there's, there are certain changes that definitely have a particular effect. There are certain things, you know, composers know that certain things work. Hans Zimmer knows that if you go, dum, 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 it works brilliantly with a chase scene. Other yeah. film composers and other, they, they, there are techniques that kind yeah. of, yeah. Very you just know where you are. Yeah. 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 I'm conscious well, of time. I think you've got yes. one more, yeah, I just wanted, yes, I'm conscious of it too. I just wanted to finish by talking about a project that I did rec very recently. With, with, with I, I've, I'm head of research at a new organisation called DBSI, and, and and one of my ex students when I was at Plymouth is is a music instructor at a psychiatric hospital in Dawlish called Langdon Hospital, and we just and he and I initiated a remix project where we asked some of the he, he teaches the patients music production. And he's got amazing results with many of these patients who were non-musicians and hadn't got any kind of music or music production experience. They go with him with the music room. He teaches them how to use the equipment and he gets them to sort of kind of express themselves through a particular theme. And the theme in this project was the window. So the window and during lockdown, the window, what are you, what yeah. is the window? looking at what is when who else is looking out of the window and other other metaphorical interpretations of what a window might be a lens or a microscope and so on um and this track is by um, a patient called nc um who um who is from uh, angola and he um repeats this phrase which in angolan portuguese means open the windows of your mind and i think um this is a remix that we did of him and i think it's um, very effective, but I'd like to know what yeah, you think. Thank you. Thanks. Looking in whilst looking out, society for the microscope. Abde is an element of torment. Sightseeing under the midnight sun, genetic antiquity proceeds. Ablazinella the torment. Focusing in pools of dark still water, work blurred images from history merged with those of tomorrow. Ablazinella the torment. Light scutters as bubbles rise, slow motion in the kelp forest. Abrezinella the torment. With closed eyes, hands outstretched, I feel for the light switch with a backward step. 
but you can leave it there if you like. That wasn't there, that's what what I'll do is I'll share the I'll share the, the, the web link so that you can. Thank you. That'd be great. Because so I think there's there's something really effective about about the fact that he has, you know, this remote collaboration is going on, and he's he's clearly an artist who is in in a hospital rather than it being a kind of music therapy exercise. Yeah. Which I think it could been very, very, really interesting, you know, experience. So right. I'll, I'll finish there, but I'm, I'm happy to answer any other questions that anybody is interested in. Just looking at the chat, I think we've managed to cover most things we've gone along. So um, I'll, I'll check, but what we'll do is um, we're in the summary, we'll, we'll, people come out, if anybody's got any follow-up questions, I'm sure we can uh, come, come back to you. But that's been fascinating, absolutely fascinating. So thank you very much for sharing well, that. Thank you very much for inviting me. Thank you very much. Thank you.